In recent decades, a number of provocative publications have carried irreverent depictions of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, thereby causing offense to practicing Muslims and sparking violent outrage among some radicalized practitioners of the faith. Muslims not only avoid depictions of the man whom they hold to be God's greatest prophetic messenger, but they also avoid any depiction of Allah, or God. Islam and its Prophet – Why Muslims Do Not Depict the Prophet Muhammad in Art In Surah 42 in the Quran, it states that there is nothing whatsoever like unto Allah. If nothing is like God, then no depiction of Him can be accurate or therefore appropriate. Consequently, Muslims hold that it is blasphemous to try to depict the infinite and incomprehensible being we know as God, for God is not anthropomorphic, not embodied, nor is he visible. The Quran certainly forbids the worship of other gods beyond Allah. However, the current prohibition against making or using graven images, common in Islam, comes from the Hadith rather than the Quran. In other words, the teachings of Muhammad are the source of this injunction rather than the words of the Islamic holy book. In essence, Muhammad discouraged art that depicted any humans, not just the prophet or the divine. Muhammad suggested that artists who paint or sculpt humans are competing with the one being that created all living creatures. Thus, one should avoid such depictions though illustrations of vegetables or animal life are usually acceptable. One scholar of Islam explained, the critical issue is that one does not use figural imagery in an attempt either to play God by attempting to imitate what only God can do or to give visual expression to what is, by definition, inexpressible, namely God's unity and transcendence. In addition to not containing depictions of the divine, Generally, mosques, or Islamic houses of worship, do not contain depictions of people or animals either. Most art in mosques consists of calligraphic depictions of verses from the Quran or other abstract designs. Of course, Islam has many traditions or denominations, and many approaches to living this, the second largest religion in the world. Thus, not all Muslims feel the same about art including depictions of the Prophet Muhammad, and certainly there is divergence on whether it's appropriate to depict other humans. And yet, for most Muslims, any pictorial representations of the Prophets, Muhammad or otherwise, would be considered inappropriate. Depictions of people outside of a religious context are not strictly forbidden across Islam, but many Muslims do not use them, particularly Muslims who identify as Sunni. So what's really behind the Islamic discomfort with depicting the Prophet Muhammad? And has it always been taboo to create images of Islam's founder? In the centuries following the death of Muhammad, numerous Muslims produced pieces of art depicting the Prophet and important scenes from his life. Turkish and Persian artists did not have the same discomfort with representational art as many Muslims do today. Therefore, they often produced entire books in which Muhammad's life was discussed and illustrated in detail. Depictions of the Prophet dating from as early as the 13th century CE have survived, evidencing that the prohibition against depicting him has not always been in place. It really wasn't until the 18th century, with the advent of print media, that condemnation of depictions of the Prophet became common and depictions of him became rare. In the earliest representations, Muhammad's face was traditionally visible, and the pictures were intended to reverence him and his sacred work. Over time, a flame halo, or aureole, was often incorporated into depictions as a symbol of the Prophet's holiness and divine call. However, by the 16th century, there began to be a shift in Islamic art, and Muhammad was then often depicted with a veil over his face or having his head turned away so that his face was not visible. In some cases, he was drawn but with no facial features at all. 
It's been said that one of the major reasons as to why depictions of the prophet are not currently allowed is to avoid idolatry. With the deep reverence Muslims have for their prophet, this is an understandable concern. Any risk that Muhammad might become the focus of worship instead of Allah must be avoided at all costs. Thus, removing any depictions becomes protective. Others have suggested that the deep reverence Muslims feel for God's greatest messenger is such that no depiction of him could ever do him justice or inspire the reverence due to this greatest of all men. And finally, as already noted, Muhammad expressed concern about artists who, in painting human life, were really imitating Allah's acts of divine creation. Over time, the Prophet's stated concerns were largely embraced as a commandment. For these and other reasons, in the place of direct representations of Allah, Muhammad, and other prophetic figures, there emerged in Islam the use of abstract designs and calligraphic representations of passages from the Quran. Unlike many of Christianity's greatest pieces of art, which focus the attention of the observer on the subject of the piece or on the artistic gifts of its creator, Islamic art points the viewer solely to God's glory as manifest in his sacred and revealed words found in the Holy Quran. <laughs>